Okay, hi there, Roman. Let's take a look at this set of essays. Um, the first one is the English and Homestead Letter, so here's what you said. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Smith, my name is Roman, and I am writing to you regarding my participation in uh, the English and Homestead program, and I would like to clarify some details as well as provide information on my arrival. Lovely. Very nice. I'm currently a student of Paris State University exploring marketing and would like to spend this summer in the UK to improve my English level, capitalize your E, which I hope in future will help me to benchmark externally on different countries' sales strategies and apply for jobs in international companies. Okay, I don't really understand this expression here at all. Um, so I would have probably rephrase that a little bit. Okay. I would like to clarify with you some details about my stay with your family and ask you a couple of questions. First of all, please let me know where exactly the house is located, okay? And what the usual weather in that part of UK is in summer. Then, how far? Mm. Then, how far is the place from London where I actually arrived to? All right. Um, up to here, you've been doing great. There are just a couple of little things that will change. But this sentence for me felt really awkward. Um, okay, I think you're trying to say something different. I say, also, please let me know how far away your home is from uh, where I will be arriving in London. I think this is what you mean. For your convenience, let me share with you my flight details and the exact time of my arrival. The flight number is this, and we will be landing in London at 1.30 on June 3rd. I really appreciate your readiness to meet me there. Looking forward to hearing ING from you and meeting ING again, you in the UK. Best regards. Okay, Roman, this is lovely. Um, I liked it a lot. It was um, really well organized, so it was very easy to follow. Um, I liked your introduction here, okay? Um, in other words, how can I say this? You didn't, um, you gave me a roadmap in each of your paragraphs, so I felt like that was great. Let me tell you what I mean. You essentially gave an introductory sentence to each paragraph. So here, it's very clear that you're giving me um, an introduction to yourself. Here, you're telling me, look, I have some questions. Help me with these details, okay? And then here, it's very clear that you're going to share the flight details. I mean, it was just a very well laid out letter. Um, you had some little things happening throughout. So spelling, I saw in a couple of places, was a little um, a little off. I'm trying to remember where one of those things was. Ah, yeah, convenience was spelled wrong. Um, and then there was that little expression that I thought was strange. Let's see, there was something else I thought here. Appreciate was spelled wrong. So it was little things like that. English must be capitalized, okay? Uh, but that's really it. I mean, it's some details. And then here you've got an ING because it's looking forward to plus ING. Uh, other than that, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a really nicely written essay. It was appropriate in terms of its tone. It was uh, appropriately formal. You have never met these people before, so you rightly uh, wrote this in a formal fashion. Okay, so good job. Let's take a look at your task two now. Okay, here it is. It's international marketing, so let's see what you said there. Today, with the world's globalization trends, we can observe more frequently how international brands enter some countries' markets and have influence on their economies. Okay, here again, you have a spelling mistake with frequently. Proponents of this motion, I don't agree with this word here, of this action, of this trend, of this process, of something, but definitely not motion. So, or how about this? Proponents of this believe that it is absolutely necessary for development of the countries. However, it is also considered by some that such changes could have negative implications as on their local, overall local culture and heritage. Okay, great. So you've showed us what the dilemma is here, what the, what the kind of conflict is, but you didn't do something else. You didn't give your opinion. And that's really important because since we know that you're going to discuss both views, um, if you wait until the end to tell us what your opinion is, then you're not making your position known throughout the response. And that's something you absolutely need to do in order to get a seven and above, okay? Your position needs to be clear. So when it asks you for your opinion, you really need to give it in the introduction so that it's very clear from the beginning. Okay. Indeed. <laughs> 
Technique 8, countries market apostrophe S for the influence of international brands, first of all, might help local manufacturers to prosper spelling as their sales volume will be secured from international competition. A good example could be how a lot of European spelling producers had to quit their businesses after the European Union had been established. I don't understand that. Um, that's something you need to explain because it's just not clear. Also, at the same time, we should acknowledge that culture of countries as well undergoes risks due to international market invaders. By pushing out the local brands, they simultaneously push out the country's apostrophe S heritage. All right, so there's a couple things happening here. It sounds to me like you're talking about international trade rather than international marketing, all right? So one thing I want you to do is look up a little bit what international marketing really means. Um, and then you also need to provide more examples. You need to be like with tangible examples or a tangible explanation or some extension. This just feels really underdeveloped. Yeah, I see from the word count that it's 300 words or so, um, but still it, you're not um, developing the argument fully so that the examiner is left with no questions. I mean, that's the goal for the examiner to be like, yeah, I understood, you know, Roman's viewpoint fully. I, I understand how he sees this issue. And that's actually not happening here. Um, partially maybe because you um, are discussing international trade and not marketing, but still there are some uh, gaps here in the argument. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. However, on the other hand, there are several significant benefits uh, for a country that lets S, S here, yes, foreign brands in. The major advantage from this could be healthy competitive, hmm, could be A, healthy competitive environment spelling, uh, simultaneously also spelling, uh, environment that establishes within this motion, hmm, no. Could be a healthy competitive environment, uh, established within this action, maybe, or within I'm, I'm not really sure. Uh, motion is definitely wrong here, but I'm having a hard time finding an, uh, good, uh, finding a good alternative. By having global competition, no A, companies will unavoidably have to, unavoidably, yes, have to improve quality of the products as well as reduce prices, which will be beneficial for consumers. Secondly, overall products availability, get rid of the S, and variety will improve, and some goods currently unavailable in the region might become open for purchase. Okay, this is lovely, but not what the question is asking you. They've asked you to talk about international marketing being a necessary and economical form of education in addition to spreading ideas, language, and culture. You looked at this in a totally different way. So reading your body paragraphs, it feels to me like you're answering a totally different question. It's as if you're answering, uh, discuss the uh, advantages and disadvantages of international trade. Okay, because that's essentially what your par paragraphs are focused on, and that's not what the question has asked you. So you really need to be very faithful to the question. Make sure you absolutely understand it and answer it as it is being asked of you. Okay, let's move on. Um, okay, to conclude, it is quite obvious spelling that both of the sides have benefits and drawbacks. However, I suppose I don't like this. I feel it's really informal. However, I believe that if it stays under proper control, get rid of the A, of the government, countries could significantly accelerate their economy in a long-term perspective. Mm. How about could accelerate their... You don't want to speed up your economy. You want to improve it. You want to develop it. You want to expand it. So let's try that. Could significantly expand their economy uh, long-term. And... It is authorities who are to decide whether to let all international brands in or stay specific. Okay, I like this piece of grammar here. That was nice. All right, Roman. So um, for me, the biggest issue here is with your task achievement, that it really felt like you were answering a different question. That's kind of common. In fact, in my years of experience, I find that task achievement is the area that most people really actually struggle with. Um, so it's, like I said, it's very typical, but it's something that we absolutely cover on the course and through all of our essay corrections. Um, so uh, don't feel disheartened by that. Also, I really want you to be careful with your spelling. There are a lot of spelling mistakes throughout, um, and that will affect your uh, lexical resource score. Um, you had some areas of really nice grammar that I enjoyed. Um, 
prosper was spelled wrong. They just stuck out uh, to me. So I want you to be careful with some of the spelling again. Uh, but like I said, the grammar was good. We have to work on your task achievement now, okay? So um, I invite you to sign up to the course. I think you'll find it really helpful on how you can structure your essays, how you can develop your essays, and make sure that they're cohesive and they're answering the question. So look at that as an option, please, and I would love to see more essays from you in the future. All right, good luck to you.